In 1986, 4,000 physicists went to Las Vegas for a research conference. But by the time they left, the city told them to never come back. That actually happened. And the strangest part is that physicists were only allowed back a few years ago. I actually cannot believe that nobody has told this story on YouTube before, so I decided I want to do it myself. And also explain how I personally got wrapped up in it. Hey! I'm Dyer Jungali. I'm 23 years old and now a second year physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder. But back in October 2022, I was just months into my first research project. My advisor contacted me the week and was like, Dario, we should have a meeting. And I was like, oh great, this means I must have done something wrong because why else would the big man want to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the new undergrad? My advisor was a theorist and his office looked exactly like what you would think a theorist's office would look like. There's stacks of papers everywhere and every chalkboard in the room is just full of math. I was as intimidated as I was amazed by all the math notation I didn't understand as I sat down. Eventually, he looked at me and said, Dario, have you ever been to a research conference before? Where I replied, no. And he was like, oh, well, I would love for you to be able to join our lab at the APS March meeting next year. I was ecstatic. I was also kind of relieved that I wasn't about to get a grilling. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, I'd love to. This organization was called the American Physical Society or APS. And this conference was the March meeting, which is the largest physics conference in all of North America, hosting over 14,000 physicists from across the world in, you guessed it, March of every year. This year, the conference was in Las Vegas, which I didn't know at the time, but this is a very big deal. I was then starting to remember my quantum professor in class mentioning that I was like so crazy that we were going back to Vegas, but I was a naive undergrad. I didn't really understand what this meant. So I went to my advisor and I was like, is this the one that's in Vegas? And he looked at me and he was like, oh, so you've heard. And I was like, oh yeah, totally. But like, why again is this so significant? And then from that is where he explained it all to me. The last and only time the APS March meeting was in Las Vegas was in 1986. But see, the conference was never supposed to be there in the first place. It was supposed to be in San Diego, California, but there were some issues and it forced them to move and they ended up finding a good deal with the Vegas MGM Hotel. These conferences are usually just a win-win for both organizers and Vegas. The organization gets to use the city as incentive to get you to attend the conference and Vegas gets you to come and gets your gaming revenue. Except this time, that's not how it played out. Apparently, after the conference ended, there were headlines that came out that said something like, Physicists in town, lowest casino take ever. I guess the physicists, on average, look at gaming a little bit different than the general public. They weren't drawn to like, the flashy lights or the slot machines and roulette wheels. To them, it was just statistics, and they knew the odds were against them, so they didn't play. It was said that instead, the physicists spent their time just discussing physics in the corner with each other and eating at buffets, basically completely ignoring all the gaming. Maybe with some exceptions of the card counters, I'm sure. I think the best thing that I heard is that there's even stories of physicists walking up to gamblers at the tables and just tell them that they were playing wrong. Like, can you imagine just enjoying your vacation sitting at a blackjack table and just like this old dude with crazy hair just comes up to you and is like, Hey, you know you're gonna lose, right? The odds are against you. You're never gonna win. Why are you even doing this? You're stupid. It's just math. Come on, it's just math. Like, <laughs> so by the end of the week, the casino's take was so bad that the MGM Grand, and for all I know, all of Las Vegas, told the American Physical Society they will never come back. So officially, the physicists were never individually banned, but the APS organization was effectively barred from ever coming back because no Las Vegas hotel would ever want to host them. So at this point, I asked my advisor, so why after 30 years are we finally allowed back? And the response he gave me was the greatest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. He was like, ah, oh, well, Dario, you see, all those people that made those decisions, they're now either senile or they're dead, so we're back. And then he continued to say how I should make sure to soak it all in because we probably weren't going to be back for another 30 years. So I laughed and I was like, okay. But another part of me was definitely still very stressed because the other detail I haven't mentioned yet is that he wanted me to do a 12 minute talk in the graduate research session with all the PhD students as an undergrad. That part scared me, but like, hey, 
we're going to Vegas. So when March came around, what happened? Was it the same as 1986 or were all the physicists gamblers now? I can tell you because I was there. From my experience, lots of the students I met were very interested in going to parties or eating at cool restaurants. But again, neither them nor any of the professors at that conference seemed to care to gamble. I mean, I walked all over the Vegas Strip that week, but not once do I remember seeing anyone with their green APS conference lanyards sitting at a slot machine, blackjack table, or anything. So I guess I understand why Vegas hated us the first time, and I really doubt they loved us that time either. So something tells me that we might have to wait for some people to get old again before we go back. Oh yeah, in that talk I had to give, in case you're wondering, it almost went horrible and then ended up being fine. On the day of, I gave a practice talk to both my advisor and the PhD student I was working with, and in the first 30 seconds of giving it, when I introduced all of us, I said both of their names completely wrong. And at the end, my advisor said something to me like, oh, not bad, but like, I don't think that's how you say our names. Maybe just don't say them. And I was like, oh my God, I felt so stupid. But, 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 we locked in and I was given some awesome advice. If I made it really clear in the beginning of the talk that I was an undergrad. Hello, everybody in the presentation hall. I am an undergrad. Then they would be merciful. And it actually worked. The actual talk went much better than the practice ones. And when I was done, I got just a couple softball questions. And I was out of there and back to eating all the awesome food that is in Vegas. I think I could honestly talk for hours about everything that happened in that conference because I'm an idiot. But... I really just want to emphasize how fun research conferences are and that there's such a great reward for all of the hard work you do in research and a great way to travel for free. This is now a good time for me to say if you think science and research are cool, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel. It would help me a lot. And if you're someone that is like, yeah, this is cool and all, but like, there's no way I'm qualified to do anything like this. Well, fun fact, you are. And I made a video about it right here. And if you're someone that wants to learn more about what happens at research conferences, I just made a vlog about the last one I went to, and it was awesome. You should check that out too. Either way, that's the story. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to help the algo, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!